Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Ratchet & Clank, the PC version. So we're going to start by improving Windows and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphic setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for example, here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's gonna show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically. And you just lower the software like that. And you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software. And also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, so as you can see, it looks like a Sony menu. It looks like Spider-Man. Gonna start by window mode. Make sure that you're playing full screen. Don't use other mode. Uh, you're gonna get some random stuttering. So I really recommend to go with full screen. After that, for the display resolution, I really recommend to go with native. So if you have a 2K monitor, go in 2K, 1080p, 1080p. So make sure that you're selecting your uh, native monitor. After that, you have the V-Sync. You need to remove the, uh, the LSS over there. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of V-Sync. It adds input lags when you're playing a game. So me, I just unchecked it. You can use also other technology like FreeSync or G-Sync. Uh, but uh, if you don't like those steering line and you don't have those technology, you can activate V-Sync. If you have an NVIDIA video card, make sure that you're using the reflex low latency. After that, the upscaling. So first of all, if you have an RTX 4000 series, you have the frame generation. Normally in any game, I recommend you using it. It's it's doing magic, honestly, with your FPS. But in this game, I'm, I got some random stuttering when I was using it. So do some testing. If it's fine, just go with it. But if you're getting stuttering, uh, it's probably because of your frame generation. Uh, when, it's not well optimized for now, the game. But uh, normally, Sony, when they release it, they, they do a lot of optimization patches. So I'm pretty sure in the future, it will be a lot better. For the upscaling method, if you have DLSS, go with DLSS quality. I'm not a huge fan of all the other modes. Uh, the game looks very blurry. So DLSS quality, you will uh, gain like 15% in your FPS. If you have uh, another video card, go with the AMD FSR 2.1. Pretty much the same thing. Use quality and make sure that your sharpness is at a 5. So I'm going to go back like this. And now let's go to the graph. For the texture, um, if you have like 10 gig and more of VRAM, you can definitely go very high in 16x uh, anisotropic filtering. So depending on, on your VRAM, just lower your stuff. If you have 6 gig of VRAM, I recommend 4x and medium. So it really depends of the amount of VRAM that you have. If you have shadow quality, shadow quality, this is pretty much the parameter that will provide you most of your FPS. If I compare ultra to low, a uh, very low, sorry, you can expect 30% boost in your FPS. It's pretty crazy, but your image will not look very great. So my recommendation is go with medium. It's a good balance between performance and image quality. Pretty much the same thing with ambient occlusion. If you want like just pure FPS, go with off. But I recommend the basic SSAO. Screen space reflection, I recommend to go with off. For sure, ray tracing, if you want to tank your FPS like crazy using it. But uh, I don't recommend to activate them. For the level of detail, I recommend to go with medium. I saw very low versus medium. I saw a uh, 3% difference in your FPS and honestly a huge difference in your image quality. So that's why I recommend medium. Traffic density, I recommend to go with low. You're gonna gain a nice 6% boost in your FPS. 
Air quality and weather particle quality, I recommend medium for both. Um, this one can be a little bit tricky if your uh, computer is older, is very old. Uh, go with low uh, and you can expect a nice boost over there. Sometimes I, on my laptop, on my old Dell, uh, this one give, provide me a lot of FPS. But if you have like just a normal computer with like, I don't know, a 980 GPU, or very, it's kind of old, but it can run easily particle quality at medium. Phantom Dash Effect, I recommend to go with off. And after that, all those processing stuff, removing it, you will have also a better visibility on the studio without it. So depth of field off, bloom off, chromatic aberration off, vignette off. You can expect 4% boost in your FPS. I recommend to removing all the motion blur. Field of view, if you want a uh, field of view higher, you will see that you're going to lose some of FPS. And if you go lower, you're going to gain a little bit more. Film grain, I just go with zero again for visibility. Sharpness, I just play at five. And I remove full uh, full screen effect and screen shake. This one will provide you 3%, like 2 to 3%. But uh, it's more, again, a question of preference. So that's about it for my Ratchet & Clank uh, guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.